A minor Buddhist goddess that shows up in art is Janguli. Janguli, yes, it's uh, derived from the um, uh, Hindi Sanskrit word for jungle, which in English we use the word jungle to mean, actually it means forest in, uh, in Sanskrit. It doesn't mean uh, this uh, a huge rainforest type thing that we think of uh, when we hear the word jungle. But anyway, Janguli is, is a goddess. Uh, we, we don't have very many forms of her, and she usually shows up by herself. She does not generally have a retinue, and she is not typically associated with other uh, tantric Buddhist deities. So we primarily have four forms. Um, uh, two are white, one is green, one is yellow. So we have a, a white, one-faced, two-armed form. We have a white, one-faced, four-armed we have a green one-faced forearmed, and then we have a yellow with three faces and six arms. And she holds various attributes in her hands, but one of her main attributes is a snake. Also, uh, behind her head, she often has a, has a hood of five or seven snakes. Junguli is the tantric Buddhist goddess associated with snakes, associated with serpents, associated with nagas. And from an ordinary point of view, her primary function is to prevent or to cure snake bites. And snake bites uh, used to be and may still be a huge issue in in India, I know at the uh, in the 19th century and the early uh, turn of the 20th century, the British government kept uh, careful records of all of the snake bites because they were in the tens of thousands, if not hundred uh, thousand, each year, and, and they were a significant issue. So we have this uh, this goddess Junguli, and uh, some of the earliest depictions of her are from the uh, Densitil uh, sculpture uh, from um, the uh, early Kagyu monastery. Um, we have some painting, but uh, really the, the three most important study topics relating to uh, Junguli are her description and type. So that relates to iconography and uh, where she comes from. She comes out of primarily the, the Bari Gyatsa, the, the uh, Driptap Gyatso, the Patsap Gyatsa, and the, these are compendiums of deity texts, of descriptions of iconography that are translations from the Sanskrit into the Tibetan. So this is primarily where she comes from. She's not a major deity. She doesn't have uh, a lot of commentaries. There's not a lot of narratives. Uh, she is primarily uh, only found in these collections of iconographic texts which describe uh, initiations and then the meditation or sadhana practice. So the study topics, description and types, that's iconography. Then we have Manasa comparison. The Manasa comparison is really art history and uh, true origins. And Manasa is the, the more, today, the more conventional um, uh, Hindu or, or Shakta, Shaiva or tribal uh, deity that is related to serpents and nagas and the cure and the prevention of snake bite. So Manasa goes back a long time. We have Pala Stone depicting Manasa as well. So Junguli and Manasa uh, were on parallel uh, tracks, one Buddhist, one uh, more Hindu. Um, so that's the art history and origins. Then we have the conflation of identities. Conflation of identities is a very abstract kind of thing. It has to do with religious context, and it has to do with reading Buddhist literature and understanding how goddesses are categorized based on whether or not they're associated with uh, Tara, whether or not they're an emanation of Tara. And there's a tremendous amount of... Um, of kind of uh, effort in uh, in the end of the first millennium into uh, trying to coordinate all the loose um, uh, Buddhist goddesses into some organization and structure where they are all uh, emanations or forms of Tara or Prajna Paramita. So this is just a quick introduction to Junguli and the study topics. You can press the like button. You can uh, subscribe. 
And you can also join Horror on Patreon and you can help support with $3 a month. You can help support the work we do.